G'day, I'm Paul. So look, while the world is racing towards electrification, including Jag, who's going full electric from 2025, there is still a place for V8s. And I feel that Jag, Land Rover, they're trying to cram this five litre V8 into literally everything they can before the world goes into that electric space. And I am, of course, talking about the new Jaguar F-Pace. It's just had a big update. And this one right here is the F-Pace SVR. This is the one that warms the heart with its big supercharged V8. It's priced at a little over $142,000. It competes with things like the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio QV. And then it's kind of in this middle ground where it sort of competes with the BMW X3M, but it feels bigger than that. And the X3M is more expensive than this as well, despite this having the bigger engine. So it is in a really good space in terms of its price, but if this is too expensive, the entire updated F-Pace range kicks off from around the $75,000 mark. Today, we're going to do a detailed review of this car. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of the review, you can use the time codes up on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can find out every single time we film a new car review. Okay, before we get into it, I have to call out the wind. It is extremely windy here today, so I'm going to be yelling at you a little bit. Now, in terms of exterior design, you've got seven colours to pick from. They're all free of charge, but then you can get special SVO colours. They start from $11,000, so there's a few different ones to pick from if you want to go all out, but the standard palette's actually pretty good. So what has changed here? Well, they've changed a little bit of the styling, but more importantly, the styling changes are functional. So coefficient of drag has been reduced from 0.37 to 0.36. I've been able to scoop this bonnet down a little lower, increase the air vent, and as part of a change to the side as well, they've been able to reduce lift at the front end by 35%. So this is all functional stuff, including the vents. They're all functional too. They all serve a purpose, which is great. The thing I love about the SVR is just how menacing it is. Big intakes along the sides there, big grill here. It means business. And then you've got the SVR badge to the side. SVR is the toughest of tough in the JLR world. And that's why this gets that fire-breathing V8 that sounds absolutely incredible. Over here, you have a set of LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. And if we whip around to the side, standard, you get 21-inch alloy wheels. This car has the optional 22-inch alloy wheels, which means probably not going to ride that well, despite the fact it has adaptive damping. So we'll wait till we head out onto the road to see what it's like. But love this wheel design. They've got this sort of brushed blade on the side and then a piano black look on the inner edge there. And then SVR etched into the actual wheel itself. It is an impressive looking setup. Four piston calipers on a 395 mil rotor at the front. And then you have a 396 mil rotor at the rear. You also have staggered tire width. So up the front here, you get 265s, 295s at the rear. And this is part of that package on the side that I mentioned it reduces lift at the front end by 35%. So they really have gone to town on these functional changes to make this a better performance SUV. Over on your wing mirror, you have an indicator built into there. Little camera there for the 360 cam. Panoramic roof up the top, privacy glass. And if you come around to the rear, get a set of LED tail lights along the back here. Reflector off to the side, another SVR badge, quad exhaust pipes. Again, functional, they make a whole lot of noise. Let me know what you reckon about the design of the F-Pace SVR. I think this is, without doubt, the best looking SUV in this segment. It just looks sensational, especially here in SVR trim. So let me know what you think down there. Is it a good looking SUV? We're inside the F-Pace. Let's start off with the key. Here it is. So you have lock, unlock, headlight, boot, panic, then on the back you have a Jaguar. It is a proximity sensing key. So leave that in your pocket. And then once you're inside, you have this stop start button. Now the F-Pace range has received an update and I think they've really gone above and beyond this time around in terms of giving this a premium feel. The last time we drove the F-Pace was the old SVR and you know, it looked nice, but it sort of, this is just, this is something else. And the entire F-Pace range in Australia comes with this setup. So it actually looks pretty nice. Okay. What am I talking about there in terms of niceties? Well, this is PV Pro, the new infotainment system they've debuted. It's on a curved screen, so that sits there nicely. Along the top of the dashboard, you have this suede material, and then it's sort of interspliced with leather and then stitching. Same story on the lower part of the dashboard, leather setup. Then you have these faux vents that run along the side of the dashboard there all the way to the end. New centre section here with a new gear shifter and then touch sensitive controls along the centre. Love the seats in the SVR as well. These are just beautiful. They hug you in nicely. Big SVR insignia along the top there. It just feels schmick. Very impressive stuff. Now, what about your touch points? So, 
pretty firm but kind of soft there in the center and soft and suede over on the doors. How soft are they? Well, we've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description. Builds quality. Every time we publish a Land Rover review or a Jag review, you all complain about how unreliable they are and build quality and stuff. This one genuinely is fantastic. I said this in the Range Rover review. I know a lot of companies go on about how they're trying to improve things, but JLR has actually spent a fair bit of money on making sure there's less quality control issues on the production line and less quality control issues when customers get their cars. And I genuinely feel like that has been achieved inside this cabinet. Feels really well screwed together. Let's talk infotainment. This is probably the thing that has me most excited about this car. Well, aside from the supercharged V8, and that's Pivi Pro. So Pivi is their new infotainment system, and we tested it previously in the Land Rover Defender. So it's a smaller version of this. Pivi Pro is the big 11.4 inch screen. I love the fact that it's on curved glass. It really just looks absolutely schmick. It's very quick as well. This uses always on technology. It comes with the ability to do software updates over the air and all that kind of fun stuff. So you have satellite navigation built into the screen. Now with 4G connectivity, you can also have uh, satellite maps on display as well, which is what we've got here. Uh, generally, it works pretty well. Uh, it's nice and fast. You can move it around and do things. A little slow there on cold start, but um, generally it's not too bad. Um, if we jump over here to the home screen, you have smartphone mirroring with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like first. Check out the size of that. I don't think I've seen a CarPlay screen bigger than that before. And the resolution is incredible. That is so sharp. It is really, really sharp. I like that. And this is what Android Auto looks like. So again, full screen integration. Uh, yeah, nice and sharp and quick as well. So very impressive stuff. On the radio front, you have AM, FM and DAB plus digital radio, along with the ability to stream audio via your phone from internet stations and that kind of thing. There's a 13 speaker Meridian branded sound system. Now someone mentioned that they wanted to get our impressions on the sound system of these cars. The reason I don't really mention anything is because I'm not an expert on sound. I don't really have an objective way of telling you one sound system is better than the other. I may like the sound of some more than others, but um, I don't know. Let me know if you think that's useful information. I'm happy to offer that up as well. Uh, let me know your feedback in the comments section below. I should also mention as well that if you go over here to the menu, you have a couple of other cool items like your weather. This will show you the weather where you are. You can also have a look at other locations, including where you're driving to. You also have the ability to customize the dynamic mode and what each of the different functions of the car do. In there, you've also got a stopwatch, a lap timer, and a G meter as well. And if we dive through the rest of these, you've got all surface information. This is part of a package that you can get that tells you where the torque is going around the car. And then finally, you have the ability to connect this car to your app, which gives you the uh, option of remotely unlocking and locking and just seeing the status of the car and keeping track of its location as well. Now, ahead of the driver as well, you have another 12.3 inch display. This has your trip computer, it has a speedo and also has the ability to go full screen if it needs to and display customized items down the center of the screen as well. Moving on to safety technology, you have autonomous emergency braking that works at low and high speeds. You have an auto dimming rear vision mirror, lane departure warning, lane keeping assistant, radar cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, a blind spot monitor. You have a safe exit assistance. So if you go to get out of the car while there's another car or cyclist coming, it's going to prevent you from doing that. And in terms of parking, you have both front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what the camera looks like. So one push of this button brings it up. So it's interesting, you've got the, the view of the car there, but what you can also do is select different views. So you can press once there or go for a wider view. Same story from the back. You can then do side angles if you want to see the sides of the car, front angles as well. So not a bad setup. The quality is good, but not amazing. I mean, you can see there the 360 is great, but um, actually it's not too bad once you select the actual view itself. So um, yeah, not a bad setup. Now, super quickly, um, I mentioned earlier that Jag is moving to full electric. Are you ready for the move to electric? Or do you still wanna own one of these noisy beasts before you jump over to electric and take it all in? Let me know what you think down there. 
let's talk practicality and charging your devices. So you have a 12 volt outlet just there. Inside the center console, you have two USB outlets and another 12 volt outlet. One of those is a USB-C, one is a USB-A. Wireless phone charging is randomly optional. It's been fitted here to this car and that's where the pad sits. In terms of storage, where are you going to put your devices? Let's start off here with our phone. So that can easily live down there on the wireless charging pad, or you can slot it here in the cup holders, or, I love this, you can sit it there vertically. So, uh, very impressive little setup. Coffee cup, you've got two tiers of bottle holder here. So you have a super deep one that doesn't really sit well with the cup, and then you have a slightly less deep one that takes your little coffee cup better. Bottle storage, same thing, slides all the way in, and then you have these little grip teeth off to the side. Let's try bottle storage in the door. Good for that one. I wonder if it'll take a big bottle. Yes, big bottle fits in there as well. Center console. That's not too bad. Nice and deep. Glove box. Reasonably sized. And then you have a sunglasses holder up the top here. Let's talk about your comfort features. So you have heated and cooled seats for the front row. Dual zone automatic climate control. Seats themselves. They are proper, proper race seats. They hug you in beautifully. You have a whole subset of controls here. You can basically pull them in tighter around your torso, fully electrically adjustable for driver and front passenger, including memory as well. String wheel's interesting. So it sits great in the hand, but have a look at these perforations off to the side. Yeah, they, they sort of um, feel nice in the hand. So um, yeah, impressive setup there. Reach test. Yes, good, all easy to reach while you're driving. Second row of the F-Pace, what is room back here like? It's actually pretty reasonable. I've got a decent amount of knee room and that's even with my seat quite far back. Plenty of toe room and headroom is pretty good as well. You get matte pockets in the back of the seats. You get heated seats for the two outboard seats. Vents, you have a 12 volt outlet here. Center armrest with two cup holders. Fits our bottle nicely with some rubber teeth there. And then you have enough room inside the doors for storage of a small bottle. I'll try the big one. Mm, doesn't really fit in there. It is a bit disappointing there's no USB outlets back here for the kids to charge their devices. There's sort of nowhere to plug into. But you do get two isofix points on the two outboard seats. And I love the view out of this panoramic sunroof. It's a uh, pretty impressive setup. Okay, let's talk cargo space. So you get a powered tailgate. In its standard form here, you have a little over 750 litres of cargo space. Beneath the cargo floor, you get a very orange space saver spare tyre, hooks over to the sides and a 12 volt outlet. Now the fascinating thing here is that if you want to get these levers here to release the second row, they're optional. So you're gonna pay extra for that for some reason. But anyway, one flick of that drops the second row there and that expands the space to around 1800 litres. In terms of the bags, I'll show you what it looks like with those in there. There you go. So it is a pretty functional space. So we hit the road in the F-Pace SVR. Powering this is a slightly tinkered version of the pre-facelift engine, and that's a five litre supercharged V8. This engine really just personifies Jaguar. It's got plenty of bark, it's got plenty of poke, and it's just really fun to drive with. Produces 405 kilowatts of power and 700 newton meters of torque. And that's all mated to an eight speed ZF automatic transmission. So no dual clutches here, just a standard gearbox. And I think it's all the better for it because with supercharged engines, you just need to have the torque available across that rev band. And when you're moving off a standing start with a dual clutch, it can just be so incredibly fussy. This is just that perfect middle ground where you're getting the snappiness. It may not be as quick as a dual clutch transmission and gear changes, but it's near enough and you're never gonna notice the difference. Jaguar claims a combined fuel economy of 11.7 liters per 100 Ks. We are currently sitting on 13.6 liters per 100 Ks, which look, I think it's pretty impressive when you consider the amount of oomph this thing has. It's right where it needs to be in terms of fuel economy, but keep in mind, if you do get stuck into it, it is going to chew through a stack more fuel. As part of the facelift, Jag worked on the steering and the brake pedal feel. If you watched our previous video of this car, I complained that the brake pedal was just a tiny bit spongy and the steering didn't have a great deal of feel through it. The brake pedal now is almost a little too far in the opposite direction. The second you breathe on it, 
it is really, really bitey. And look, you will eventually get used to it, so it's not that big of a deal, and I do prefer this kind of feel instead of that spongy feel where you don't actually know whether it's doing anything. Um, so that's a big tick. Steering-wise, it's much better as well. I don't know, that, that wooden feel the F-Pace had previously has been thrown out, and now it's far more communicative. You know what's going on, and you really feel what's happening beneath the car. It all comes in through this steering wheel, so um, big tick there for steering and brakes. Now, what about dynamic mode? I think that is the one we're all interested in here. We'll flick this over to dynamic. Immediately, all the dials go red. It stays in drive, so we'll pop that down into sport. Exhaust is open. Oh, man, that sounds so good. So, so good. Oh. It is making an absolute racket. I love that. Okay, let's give this a punch. Oh, that is sensational. You get plenty of supercharger wine as well, so you can hear everything that's going on. Barks on downshift. I'm give it a punch up here. <laughs> that is so cool. So this is the type of thing you really don't get in vehicles like the Macan. The Macan Turbo is technically a competitor to this, and I can tell you right now, it does not sound anywhere near as good as that. Even stuff like the X3M, it all sounds artificial. This is all legit. Like when you lay into that, it is all happening. You flick back through the gears. It is, it is really good. They haven't diluted any of that noise. So it is a big bonus there that they have kept it all the same and you get all the improvements inside the cabin that you need. So it's a win-win. So in dynamic mode, everything stiffens up. You get a little bit more weight in the steering and it still remains dead flat. It is remarkable how they've made something the size of an SUV just handle so beautifully. In dynamic mode as well, it can send up to 90% of torque to the rear axle. And that means when you do tuck it into a corner, you get a whole lot more rear feel instead of it. Kind of just feeling like an all-wheel drive car. And I think that's what gives you that dynamic edge behind the wheel. They've really just dialed it in perfectly so everything is communicated through the chassis. Now, in addition to all of that, you have an electronic diff lock that's going to ensure that you can go from fully open to fully closed, all with the smarts of the car taking care of everything. Then above and beyond that, you have a brake bias torque vectoring system. So it's able to pinch the brakes on the rear axle if it needs to tuck the car in. And look, ultimately this I don't know, it's, it's a bigger SUV and that's why it's so hard to, to shoehorn it in with competition because it does feel bigger than an X3 and a GLC 63, but then it feels smaller than an X5. So it kind of sits in that little middle ground there, but it certainly feels like it handles like the, the smaller cars on that scale and you're, you're really sort of getting that feeling behind the wheel. Jaguar claims a zero to 100 time of four seconds flat. This is how it went against our stopwatch. Okay, let's talk about the other drive modes. We'll pop it back into comfort. So in addition to comfort, you have Eco and ADSR, which is like a uh, sort of low traction launch type program. Tell you what, when you put it into comfort, you still get some of that aggression, some of that bark out of the, out of the exhaust, but it's still nice and quiet and serene. And then always in comfort mode, you can just press the exhaust button if you do want it to make a bit more of a racket. It kind of has that perfect balance dialed between aggression and also quietness and subtlety when you actually need it to be quiet. Now in terms of the ride, so adaptive dampers, 22 inch alloy wheels, ultimately that is a big wheel and a low profile tire, but it doesn't actually feel all that bad behind the wheel. In comfort mode, it's nice and pliable, it's compliant. It is on the firmer side of comfortable, but it's not going to do your back in. Even in dynamic, it's not that firm. It still just firms it up so you get a gauge of what's going on on the road, but it's not gonna sort of uh, break your back or rattle your teeth out, which is great. Let's talk road noise. It's actually not terrible. You do hear a bit coming in through the cabin, especially on course chip roads, but this car has active noise cancellation, so they're using the speakers to remove some of the tire noise that comes into the cabin. They've also improved insulation too, so on all fronts it actually is pretty good. But you still thankfully get plenty of exhaust note into the cabin, plus that supercharger wine. Now what about visibility? 
Out the front there, it's good. I love that you can actually see the edge of those bonnet scoops. That's really cool. Out the sides, you have decent sized wing mirrors and you can see clearly down the side of the vehicle. There's blind spot monitor built into those as well. Looking out the rear of the car, the envelope is super narrow. So it is a little tricky to see out there, especially if you do have passengers in the second row. Now you're not gonna be doing any off-road driving in this, but just so you know, 213 millimeters of ground clearance. And if you do any towing, 2,400 kilograms of braked towing capacity. Okay, so Jaguar F-Pace SVR. If you own one of these or you're looking to buy one of these, we're automatically friends. This car has taken a big leap forward over the last one. The last one, I don't know, if you looked at our old review, you can click up here to watch that. It was just full of issues, like the build quality wasn't amazing, the infotainment system was terrible, and yes, it did redeem itself with a great engine, but I don't know, the steering wasn't great, ride wasn't perfect. This addresses virtually all of that. The infotainment system is excellent. It's still incredibly well priced. They fixed the steering, the ride's good. I mean, it is hard to complain about this. And if you are wanting to do the leap to electric, I think you should have one of these in your life before you do that, especially before they become extinct. It is an absolute ripper machine. And at that price, it is really good value for money. Now, let me know in the comments section below, have you bought one? Did you order one? I'm really keen to get your feedback and see exactly what you think of it. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you share it with your mates, like it. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon as well. But until next time, take it easy.